32 and live alone in a rural house. I have a few neighbors half a mile down that I talk to sometimes, but I mostly keep to myself and only go into town when I need to. I'm half retired, so I spend most of my time at home, but a few months out of the year I do some contracting work. At the time it was late fall, and on this day I was getting all of my equipment from out in the yard and storing it in the shed to prepare for the winter season. It was just a bunch of tools and lawnmowers and stuff like that that I'd left out. Anyway, while I was outside, I saw something unusual. A man was walking along the road that connected to my driveway. He had nothing on him, no backpack or camping gear. For context, this road he was on was entirely empty aside from the few houses like mine, and the town was a four-hour walk away. I watched him until he disappeared far off down the road. After he was gone, I looked down in both directions and saw no cars on the side of the road on either direction. It was really odd, but after a while I stopped thinking about it and finished up with my yard. I was back inside before dark and made dinner while I cooled off. As I sat there, a sudden thud from outside startled me up from the table. It was a wooden thump, like it had come from where the shed was. I looked through the window out into the yard, and the door to the shed was wide open. It was old, but the door had never unlatched on its own like that before. Still unsure of exactly what was going on, I knew I had to check on it and close the door at the very least. I got my rifle just in case, but I was confident it wasn't going to be anything dangerous. Walking out to the shed, I listened carefully and heard nothing other than the quietness of the night. I looked around the field as well and saw no sign of wildlife or people. When I got to the open shed door, I turned on my flashlight and shined it inside. Nothing looked out of place. I stepped in and did a more thorough search for any animals hiding, but still there wasn't anything. I closed the door to the shed and made sure it was secure, then started walking back. As I made my way through the field toward my house, an eerie feeling grew inside me. I didn't know what it was, but it continued to grow as I reached the front door. I stepped in and locked the door behind me. As I walked into the hallway, I saw a shoe print right on the floor. I flicked on the light, and going across the hallway was a line of dirty shoe prints leading up to the spare bedroom. My heart started beating faster as I held my rifle up and took a deep breath, then carefully walked up to the door. I leaned my head against the wood and listened, hearing what sounded like someone breathing right on the other side. Before I could even think on what to do next, the handle twisted from my grip and the door swung open. I jumped back and held the rifle up as a man looked like he was about to charge at me holding a huge metal shovel up. I think my gun stopped him in his tracks though. He stood in the doorway holding the shovel like a weapon and having a face full of rage. I yelled as loud as I could for him to stay back, trying to sound intimidating, but I was undoubtedly terrified. The man kept his distance, but his face full of anger never faded. From this moment though, I didn't know what to do. Cops wouldn't be able to make it here for probably an hour if I called, and I definitely didn't want to hold him at gunpoint for that long, risking anything to happen. As we stood in a strange silence, the man suddenly threw the shovel in my direction, then sprinted back into the room. I ran in to see what he was doing and watched him start crawling out of the window. Part of me wanted to stop him, but another part of me couldn't get myself to. He jumped out and ran off into the field, escaping in the vast empty night with no way of knowing where he was running off to. To this day, that man has never been identified, and his intentions are unknown. All I can say is that if I hadn't had my rifle in my hands, or if he had gotten the jump on me, I likely wouldn't be here today.
I don't go on many trips out of town, so this was one of the few times I've had to stay somewhere other than a friend or family's house. The area I needed to stay in was small, and most of the hotels didn't look very nice. But to my surprise, there was a single home listed on Airbnb. It was my first time using the site, but the house looked like a decent place, much better than the hotels. I requested the dates and in a few minutes the place was booked. The following week I started the drive. When I got to the town, which was about 14 hours from my city, it was well into the night. The town almost looked deserted compared to where I was used to living. All the houses lights were off and all the stores were closed. No people or cars were out. Of course, it was the middle of the night, so I didn't expect this small town to be lit up and active at this time, but it was still eerie, considering I hadn't seen it during the day. I only came in with this as the first impression. The street that took me to the Airbnb was dark as well, leading through a winding forested neighborhood until I eventually ended up at the house. It was one of few that had its porch and outdoor lights on, but one window upstairs had a light coming through it as well. I figured the last customer had just made the mistake of leaving it on, so I thought nothing of it and started getting my stuff up to the front door. I got the key code for my email and opened the door, getting inside and locking the door behind me. I quickly put my stuff in the corner of the room, then went upstairs to turn off the light that was left on. It was one of the spare bedrooms, only having a bed and a small dresser in it. I flipped it off, then went to the main bedroom to set up my things. I was only staying for the one night, but I had it booked for two because I needed to be there late into the following day. I was up for no more than an hour before finally getting in bed and turning in for the night. I rested my eyes and tried to sleep, but was laying awake for a long time. I sat up quickly, hearing the thud run through the walls of the house. I stared at the door, trying to think what could have been the cause of the sound, but with no ideas coming to mind, I got up to check. I opened the door softly, peering into the upstairs hallway. It was dark and quiet now. No more thuds, only the sound of the house swaying in the wind. I stepped back and quietly shut the door, but a strange feeling came to me that had me wait as I thought more about the sound I heard. As I stood there, soft creaks started to go along the floorboards from the other room. I listened with my ear against the door as the creaking moved into the hallway and then began making its way toward the door. I was so in shock that I almost didn't realize that it had to be footsteps of someone approaching. My heart started racing as they came right up to the other side of the door. I put my hand tightly on the door handle to keep it from moving, and only a moment later I felt it pull down. As soon as I resisted it, they eased off. There was a small moment before suddenly the handle was forced down and they slammed into the door. It swung half open before I pressed my body back into it. I only saw half of their face in the doorway, but in their eyes was an anger that I didn't expect to ever see. After a struggle, I somehow managed to push the door back into the latch and lock it. The man on the other side tried to get it back open but after yelling a few unpleasant words towards me, he ran downstairs and out of the house. I was still catching my breath and my mind was racing, but I gathered myself up and dialed 911. For such a small town, they came shortly after. The owner of the Airbnb continued with the case after I left on the following day, but I wish I'd kept up with it. That man seemed so desperate to get into my room and was in some state of rage, like he wanted to hurt me as if I'd done something to him. Everything about it is disturbing, and I don't think I'll ever get it out of my head, but Airbnbs probably won't be something I take part in again for a long time. <laughs>